it's an honor to have you here tonight, so thank you for joining us. So um, I have all these notes, <laughs> um, so forgive me. Um, uh, I'm just going to try to wing it if I can. Um, I worked with Cartoon Saloon for a long time, um, and uh, so it's always an honor to be here with, with Nora. And um, so uh, there's a few things that I, I would love to be able to mention uh, before we get started. So um, it's a co-production, the Red Winner was a co-production between Luxembourg and, uh, well, Ireland first, Ireland, Canada, and Luxembourg. And um, it's my understanding that um, it was, uh, so animation, uh, pre-production and animation was done in Ireland, and there was animation and some backgrounds that were done in Luxembourg. And there was a host of things that, that Anthony was taking care of in, in Canada. And then the guys were, were doing music uh, all over the world. And so we're going to get to, 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 to that. But Nora has a really interesting way of approaching uh, animation. And she did a first pass with Julian Renard. Um, he did a film called Somewhere Down the Line. And it's a, it's a great short film, uh, which you can find on, on Vimeo. But that whole first pass was just Nora and Julia. And she also acted out, no? I think, I, I'm pretty loud anyway. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's that Sonny and Cher thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, here's a not Really? Um, you guys can still hear me though, right? So Nora, um, Nora had done live action reference for the entire film with, with, um, uh, with independent film. Um, it, there's a very, very short time frame and very limited budget. And so the, the way that she had approached this was, you know, you, you go into your storyboards, your animatics, you have to lock things before you move into the next area of production. So I just wanted to throw these things out there. And then, of course, the animation, I think it was like four seconds, four seconds a week. So I just want to throw these things out there because there's just going to be so many things to talk about and these were really, really interesting things from a, a DP animation person. I just want to throw those things out there. So um, uh, I'm going to start with uh, Anthony because um, the, the, the film, the book first came to you, right? Okay. Sure. I, you know, I can just tell you a little bit about <laughs> how that works. Um, maybe this one? This one's good. Okay. That works. Yeah, I can tell you a little bit about that. Um, yeah, so uh, The Breadwinner is based on a book called The Breadwinner by Deborah Ellis, uh, who's a Canadian author. And um, and uh, my production company, Aircraft Pictures, is based in Toronto, um, with offices here, and we basically, you know, I had actually came across the book on uh, a very, you know, we was not scouting for new material or anything like that. It was on a, a family vacation where we, um, you know, we were together with about 15 other people, and one, uh, the first night, uh, one of the people in our party, this nine-year-old girl, was reading The Breadwinner, and it had just come out, and this is about 15 years ago, and uh, and so she asked her mother if she could read it aloud to her after dinner. And slowly but surely, everyone in our group, and there was probably you know from nine to sixty-five years old, uh, covered. Everyone was kind of roped into the story that was being told, and and we all sat there, fifteen of us, just listening to the story. And and we did the same thing every single night on this entire trip uh, until we read the entire book. And it was this really magical, traditional storytelling experience that I'd never had as an adult, and, and kind of speaks to Deborah's book and, and the quality of that. And it wasn't until about five or six years later that uh, we were meeting with the publisher of the book, and they were presenting different novels that were available for adaptation, and she pulled out The Breadwinner. Um, this is with Groundwood Books. And I was like, oh my god, that's the book that like we had us all so captivated, and I was immediately uh, you know, charged and uh, really excited, and so we optioned the book. And uh, our company had, you know, traditionally known for live action um, scripted content, and it's not until the last couple of years, starting with the Breadwinner, that we started to expand into animation. And so 
we thought about doing it as an animated film at first, but um, you know, we looked at kind of the market for animated films with this kind of subject matter, and even though the book was written uh, for students in, in sixth to eighth grade, uh, we felt if we were going to make it viable uh, commercially, we would, as a live action film, we'd have to go the route of like The Kite Runner or Osama or these other films. Or it was really great for an art house audience, but it wasn't necessarily going to find that kind of student audience that uh, had grown up reading the book. And it's stayed as part of the curriculum in a lot of schools um, across North America and Europe. Uh, so we thought if we went animated uh, with it, we would be able to please both audiences, still appeal to an art house audience, but then also um, make it accessible to the students. And you know, we looked at films at the time that we were uh, animated films that we really were excited by, uh, uh, including Persepolis and uh, The Secret of Kells, uh, which had just come out. And so we decided Cartoon Saloon was like our number one choice, and we were just going to call them up and meet with them and, and talk about it. And uh, the rest is kind of history. We, we met with them, and uh, the script in the book made it its way to Nora, and, uh, and she really, really wanted to direct it, and we were super excited, and uh, a marriage was formed, and we kind of took it from there. And uh, I just have to say that, like, you know, the it's definitely a standout uh, project in my career where, you know, 300 people working on it, and every single one of them, no matter what job they were doing, I put a lot of heart and soul into this project. And it sounds a bit like a cliche, but I actually, you know, it was, it was unbelievable to me that at every level, no matter what people were doing, you know, they put a lot into it. And so we knew, uh, you know, early on that it was a really special project. I should probably ask the question before I hand this off to Nora. Uh, maybe you can hand one off to Nora then. Um, I wanted to know from Nora um, if she could tell us why this was such a, an important story to tell. Mm, um, that's a, an interesting question, I guess, uh, and I can only answer from my own perspective, I guess. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, for me, I think it's the character of, of Perlana, especially the way that uh, Deborah Ellis writes, and writes in particular for, for young adults, I think, in, in a way that doesn't talk down to them. So for you know, uh, for kids from the age of nine upwards, um, she writes in a very matter-of-fact way, in a very empathetic way. But at the, at the end of the day, she doesn't um, she doesn't sugarcoat things. I think, um, and she writes in a way which um, doesn't give simplistic answers to children, but it, it helps them to form questions. So the idea of doing that with uh, with a film was was really really interesting. I think, and to to carry on the the, the, the torch that that. that Deborah had lit, uh, you know, and to carry it through to to a film was something that was really, really uh, exciting and interesting. And I think as an independent filmmaker um, and finding partners around the world, like you know Anthony and with uh, Stefan in, in in Luxembourg, um, that that's an incredibly exciting thing, you know, because you you, you realise that you can tell a story. It, it doesn't have to change that much, you know, kind of thing. It, it certainly is not led maybe by by um, you know, box office, let's say, you know, kind of thing, those kind of thoughts, it's, it's led purely by, by story, you know, and, and by people who, who, who love story and, and who love um, developing characters like uh, like Piranha and like her family uh, in this film. So, uh, so all of those things, I guess, um, led led to that. Also, I think when you when you can fund a film the way that we did using film boards in, in the different uh, territories, um, tax breaks and things like that. We had some hard uh, finance there in there as well. Um, but you have an opportunity to tell stories that don't normally get told and certainly don't get told with this medium and to stretch this medium in a way beyond what people expect and beyond genre and, you know, and use the medium for, for what it's best at and which is exploring interesting ideas in a way that em accesses a, a particular part of an audience's uh, capacity for empathy. Um, I think all of these are, are, are really exciting ideas, so, so that's why, I think. <laughs>